Good morning, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. This is, uh, I believe it's April 10th. Just a beautiful, beautiful day. Uh, we could have done without the frost we had this morning. That's going to slow our grass down a little bit. We had a really heavy frost. Um, you know, it's kind of late to be getting a frost this late in April, but I'll take the frost over, you know, eight to 10 inches of snow. Um, the cows just started to drop calves. I think we're on our fourth. And it looks like any day we could have 20 in one day. Man, there's a bunch of them really starting to spring up. But uh, we've got things set up for our cattle drive in the morning. Uh, we'll be moving them. <clears throat> we like cattle drives on Sunday mornings. People sleep in and don't hardly ever meet any vehicles. And so we moved them. We actually took them right by the intern house this morning on the driveway. And then uh, gave him this. So this would be our last stockpiled paddock of the year. Um, we're done. So what we're doing is, you know, they're, they're not on a very big area here. They may maybe have three acres, but it, see all the dry matter in there? And so what we're gonna do is let them eat this up pretty good. And uh, we'll give them that tonight, that green section down. That's what this looked like about an hour ago. And when they graze this off up here, we're gonna give them this for about three hours. And then we've got some bales over there. We're gonna give them two. I don't wanna limit these animals. Uh, right at cabin, uh, you sure don't wanna be limiting your cows, uh, you know, about time they start calving. <laughs> There's a the little guy right there. Okay, so that's, yeah, that's, that's uh, should have been 201. I mistakenly put 21 on that, or the that's what I instructed to do. The rest of them are going to be 201, or actually be 202, 203, two meaning 2022. But we still know which one it is. It's the first cat born in 2022. Got the water set up. We got our Hershey trees caged off over there so the cows can't rub on them. Oh, there's another one right there. And uh, we got the University of Missouri uh, sustainable ag class coming out here within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Mary, Mary Hendrickson's bringing out her group of kids, students, and uh, gonna give a talk on <clears throat> plan grazing. And then we're gonna walk down and show them our, our mushroom log operation, kind of give a little talk on how we do that. And, uh, you know, these are the. These are young kids that uh, major, one of the courses they've got is this, it's kind of cool. It's a sustainable ag course. And uh, Fred March used to be the teacher of it years ago. And Fred was very instrumental in bringing uh, grazing to the forefront all through the Midwest. He was the superintendent up at Linnaeus, Linnaeus, Missouri years ago when i went up there when jim garrish and those guys were there uh, fred was actually the superintendent at that school i want to show you something about this guys so there's a manure pad that would have been dropped in november let's see what's in there pull it open <laughs> look at the worms my god Think we have soil life, folks? Look at that. They've turned that manure into dirt. Beautiful earthworm casting. So everybody talks about dragging the manure. You don't need to drag your manure paths. That's a waste of time. As long as you have soil life, which we do. Um, we've measured our earthworm populations. Uh, we're at somewhere between 17 to 20 earthworms per square foot uh, that's really good when you start basically from zero uh, some of Doc's farm over there where they were doing the soybeans there was zero there was zero earthworms that's kind of a cute picture look at that 
<laughs> Mommy's grazing and there's, oh, Mommy, move forward. You like to see calves laying down. My dad always called it when a calf's laying down, he used the term, uh, they're putting on. That's what they're putting on weight. So, and another thing you want to watch for if, you, if you're uh, wondering if your calf is feeling all right, when you go up to them and they get up, they should give a great big old yawn. A stretch, not a yawn, a stretch. In other words, they should stretch their butt out and their front legs and their back get a big arch on it. And if a calf stretches real well when they first get up, if you're concerned about them, well, why is he so lethargic or why is he laying there or whatever, if they get up and they stretch, that's a pretty good calf. He's probably not sick. So watch for that. When the animals stretch when they get up, they're, they're, they're just fine. That wind's starting to pick up all of a sudden. There wasn't any wind out here a minute ago. But it's it's coming now. But anyway, uh, we're going to have a cattle drive in the morning. We're going to take that wire down up there by the corner of the driveway. And uh, we'll take, I don't know, we're up to four more head. We'll have 280 head going down the driveway. And uh, we have our Kawasaki mule with the big wire cage in the back. And, and we always put that cage in there when we got you know, several babies. If they get tired on the cattle drive, they'll lag behind. And when they lag behind, the boys just grab the calf and stick it in the cage. Now, there's a little trick there. When you get to the end of your cattle drive, you wanna make darn sure you get that calf. You got a tag in it, you know what your mother is. Go find that cow out in the new paddock on the new farm and you don't turn that calf loose until you find the new mother. And you, we just put it on the seat of the four wheel and drive it over to the new mother or we carry it. And when you set that calf down, it's gonna be a little bit freaked out because it's been away from its mother. Don't let loose of that calf until that cow physically takes its nose and touches it. I'm serious, you can set it down two foot from that cow, but if she doesn't touch it, She's like, mmm, moo, moo, she's mooing. She doesn't know that's her cat. But once she touches it and moves to it, you can let loose and back out of there. But don't just go up there and set it down. That calf will take off running. And now the mother doesn't know the new calf is there, her calf. And the calf is scared to death. It's going to run down in a ditch somewhere, a draw in the woods. And the mother doesn't know it's there. So don't do that. Make sure the mother sniffs it that's all you got to do so i'm gonna go ahead and sign out here and uh i think i hear the vans coming up the driveway and uh, we're gonna get this uh little farm uh pasture walk started this morning y'all have a good one and we'll see you down the road it's gonna give one more plug um on our grazing school i think there's just a few spots left on the advanced so if you're on the fence about it you better get your uh Better get on that website, greenpasturefarm.net, and get signed up because we're not going to, once it's sold out, it's sold out. We're not going to extend it and add more seats. So everyone have a good one, and uh, we'll see you next time.